So you've just joined a VEX team. Maybe you're a freshman and this is your first year and you want to start strong. Or maybe this is the first year of your program and there are no senior members to learn from. Or maybe you've been in VEX for a while and you just want to see what other teams do on their robots. This video exists to list off all the basic things that you should know to improve your robot. I'm Caden from Kepler Electronics and let's get started. This is a bearing flat. Use them everywhere. Everywhere you have a pivot, especially if you're using axles, you should be using a bearing flat. This helps the axle stay centered on the hole, and it helps prevent friction. Basically, there are two types of joints, axle joints and screw joints. Axle joints are great for things like wheels, and are a necessity in certain applications due to their energy transfer ability, and their much longer length compared to screws. Axle joints should really only be used in circumstances where you have the axle supported on both sides, such as for wheels and gearboxes. Screw joints are great for pivots. They have a lot less slop and play than axle joints, but due to their short size, as VEX only allows screws shorter than 2 inches, they can't be used in every situation. The basic procedure for a pivot is this. You'll want to have bearing flats on both sides of the joint. Never just use holes in the metal for a pivot. This adds to the overall thickness of the joint, but from my experience, this works much better. VEX sells three varieties of spacers. These thin black spacers and the thicker nylon spacers. These nylon spacers come in two varieties, the thick white spacers and the thin gray spacers. When you have to run a screw through a spacer, you never want to use the thin black spacers because they can compress and throw off your entire spacing. The nylon spacers will not compress this way, so use these whenever you need to screw through a spacer. Let's talk wheels. There are two main varieties of wheel, your more traditional traction wheels and the more exotic omni wheels. Omni wheels are very cool because they have these rollers on the edge of the wheel. These allow the wheel to roll parallel to its axis of rotation. As with nearly everything, each wheel has its pros and cons, but in most circumstances, the Omni wheel wins. The Omni wheel, because of its rollers, results in less friction when turning. This helps the robot turn more quickly and helps prevent the motors from overheating. The downside is that you can be pushed from the side more easily. The traction wheels don't turn as easily, but they do prevent you from being pushed from the side. Most of the time, you will be building your robot using C-Channel. C-Channel comes in two main varieties, steel and aluminum. Steel C-Channel is a more shiny bluish color and is much heavier than aluminum, which is a duller gray color. These both have their uses. Aluminum C-Channel is lighter, and as such, you will usually want to build most of your robot out of it. A lighter robot has the benefit of putting less strain on the motors, leading to less overheating and more acceleration, but has the downside that it is easier to push. As a rule of thumb, chassis can be built out of either steel or aluminum, lifts should be built out of mostly aluminum to reduce weight, and anything that experiences high torque, such as a catapult, should be made out of steel. Rubber banding is a very common technique used on lifts, as the rubber bands help fight the weight of your lift, helping reduce strain on the motor. This can help you lift more, as shown in this robot for In The Zone I worked on. It was able to lift a 3 pound mobile goal using just two 393 motors. Now, there are two main types of rubber banding linear banding and triangle banding. Linear banding is much simpler. It involves simply finding two points on your lift that start off far apart and get closer as the lift is raised. Triangle banding is more complicated, but if done correctly, can result in much more uniform tension as the lift expands. The goal is to find three points that create a right triangle when collapsed, but move to form an equilateral triangle when extended. In terms of number of bands, there is no set number. It just depends on your lift and how heavy it is. You basically want to have enough rubber bands so that the lift starts to move on its own, and remove a few so that the lift can collapse all the way. In current VEX competition, the V5 system is allowed 8 motors. With these 8 motors, you need to budget all of your subsystems so you don't exceed the limit. Your drive setup must be more than 2 motors, at least one for each side, but I really like to have 4 motors to be able to push other robots more easily. Lifts can be done with 2 motors, but these have to be geared down for torque, which means they can be pretty slow. The remaining two motors go to manipulating game elements, such as rollers for intaking, a claw for picking up cubes, or an arm for descoring caps. Keep in mind this is just a guideline. Of course, not every robot's going to follow this, such as the wall bot we built earlier. Thank you very much for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed this collection of tips, and I'll be sure to see you guys next time. Be sure to check out some of my other videos, such as Blastwave, my one-pound combat robot. Thank you very much for watching, and keep designing.